Right. So um, <laughs> we got 34 minutes left um, with our time. And as I shared before, we have some information that we're going to present um, as well. Uh, I would love to receive any questions that you may have so I can make sure that whenever you leave the session, we can at least touch on something specific to your towards your situation. Um, as shared within the info of this presentation, COVID-19, the stimulus checks coming in, this is a great time to reassess and potentially get proactive um, for anyone that may have missed income or their income has been directly uh, impacted. Of course, the biggest thing you wanna do is get lean and, and minimize as many expenses as possible um, so we can try to offset what it takes to live on a month to month basis. Um, but for those that are still receiving income, those that may be able to use the stimulus to be offensive, um, specifically those that work in a gig economy, you know, your, your income usually fluctuates with the type of work that you have if it's on a week to week or on a month to month basis. So it's very important that you are very proximate. You're very close to what it takes to operate not only your finances for the, you know, the business or the entity that you run or um, as well what it takes to be able to run your household. So we're going to walk through quickly a presentation to at least talk about some specific aspects of money and the ways in which we could strategize around the stimulus and ways in which we can apply those dollars. And so if you could provide any specific questions that you want to make sure that we address within this time that we have, my goal is to use the material that we have from, we'll just say it's, it's 313 now, we'll say we'll go until about 335-ish, right? Um, and leave about 10 minutes for any type of Q&A and back and forth, and then we'll be able to take it from there. All right, so let me share my screen. <laughs> All right, so when we think about managing money, regardless of your current financial position, there are some basic fundamental thoughts that we have to at least experience to ensure that we are handling our dollars in the best uh, manner that, that reflects what your goals and objectives are. And so it typically state, starts with, all right, all right, how do you feel about money? So on, on, on a scale of one to 10, how comfortable are you with how your money is being allocated? In the midst of COVID-19, you know, we'll just say the beginning of March, uh, or we'll just say mid-March is when a lot of the activity around fluctuation of pain, fluctuation of working, um, began to have an impact. So probably from March 14th uh, to the end of March, you can pull your expenses to see how you spent money in that time frame. And then, of course, the first 15 days of April, we've been stationary um, at the house. So we'll be able to see, all right, if we do have money, what type of expenses are we shelling out on a day to day or week to week basis? And then how comfortable am I with it? Um, what do we want our life to look like? It's a very... Um, we, we can say it's a simple question, a basic question, but it's a question that allows us to unpack the finances and the money that it takes for us to realize it. So having a clear understanding of what you see in front of you is going to dictate the type of money that you'll need to make it happen. And then, of course, does the way you spend money today reflect what you want in life tomorrow? All right. So throughout our time, we're, and again, I'm a quickly go through this, uh, my apologies on the technical mishaps, but some money management skills, debt elimination, especially in the midst of with this um, COVID-19 and the stimulus checks that are rolling in now, I actually uh, caught wind from a client today, a few clients today that they already received their check. So there may be a few things that you'll be able to walk away with to make sure that you're offensive within this whole aspect. So if we just look at the facts, this is pre-COVID-19, seven out of 10 Americans had less than $1,000 in their savings. If anything that this pandemic has really brought to light outside of the, the economic disparities that we have around wealth um, is the unpreparedness, the financial preparedness that Americans have, especially when it comes to having some type of nest egg of, of, of savings, especially those that are in contract work you know, it's, it's very difficult to get to a point where you have enough consistent income to where you can start setting money aside. 
But if you do have some lump sum contracts that you anticipate, you know, this pandemic highlights the importance of why you would want to set money aside for any type of unexpected event. Uh, less than 30 percent of American households have a month to month budget. Again, really, this situation has highlighted that stat. Now, when we look at just money management in, in, in general, right? And so we have three aspects of money management that we're going to talk through and walk through. And again, any questions, please hit the, uh, the chat box um, so we can make sure that we, we can address it along the way. But specifically around money management, as I mentioned earlier, when you think about money, you first want to see what type of emotions um, come to mind when you think about money. What does financially, financial dignity mean to you? Um, and then how can we create a life in which that can manifest? Budgeting, right? And so budgeting may, again, seem like a simple term, but when you intertwine the responsibility of life, budgeting is a bit more difficult because it's tied to events that are tied to our emotions, right? And so if I want to do something that's going to make me feel good nine times out of 10, I am going to develop the habits or the activity that will allow me to revisit that emotion. Right. And so if that is a purchase, if that is a trip, if that is something that ties to a dollar amount, we naturally put together budgets in our head based off what is important to us. But when we again, in a time frame in which money may be, uh, um, we'll just say not as consistent or, or we can anticipate when money is coming in, budgeting is extremely important. Cash flow. One thing that we've noticed around cash flow is. Um, Again, I'm going to highlight the pandemic and COVID-19. If we review the last two months of your bills um, and the last two months of your expenses over the last 60 days, where have you been spending money? And we pull the days in which those drafts occur and, we, and it shows that 60 percent or 70 percent of your expenses is on the within the first 10 or 15 days of the month, then we may look at readjusting your uh, uh, those bills so we can free up some cash flow on the first 15 days or the first in, a, in first aspect of the month. The reason why um, you see a an example of a debit card here is a is, is it, it probably gets a lot of people in trouble. Debit card, credit card. And so if we did take a poll and I'm actually going to uh, not I am not going to try to highlight my my tech savviness and do a poll. But if we did take a poll, and Carmen, you may be able to knock this out. If we did take a poll on how many individuals that is a part of this session right now uses a debit card or a credit card for at least 90% of their purchases, usually we get a majority of the room. Not a, not a good amount of individuals use cash these days. And there was a, I bring this up because there was a study done years ago about the endorphins that are released whenever you spend cash, um, as well the endorphins that are released whenever you smell something bad. And they found a commonality there. They said that there's some common endorphins released whenever you walk near something that may not smell good and the endorphins that are released whenever you spend cash, you know, in a particular event. And what we extracted from that study, and we've been using this for a number of years now, is that if there is an, an item in a room that I'm in and it stank, it's real funky, like just does not smell good, and I walk near that item, I am going to immediately recognize that it doesn't smell good over there, so I'm going to move away from that. <laughs> the same type of really timeline is experienced whenever you spend cash. So if I go to the bar and I grab me, and this is when social distancing is relaxed and I go to the bar and the um, let's say I get a beer and a burger and it costs nineteen dollars and thirty seven cents. Right. I give them a twenty dollar bill. I get changed back sixty three cents. So I get the two quarters of dime and three brothers in my hand. I immediately felt that transaction. And so the, the, the trouble that debit cards and credit cards can get you into is that whenever you use the card, sometimes you don't feel the transaction until you log into your bank account. And that may be three days from that time frame, a week later, two weeks later. And during that time frame, you know, there's been some other expenses that may take you out of budget. So that's why it's really important to see 
what type of expenses come out of the debit card or your credit card and if it makes sense for you to align some of your expenses even now it may be groceries groceries is a uh is a line item that has increased a good bit in regards of uh, money management and so it may make sense for you to use cash for that to make sure that you stay on budget and so if you say i'm only going to spend a hundred dollars a week on groceries 75 dollars a week on groceries pull that out in cash and, and as soon as that money runs out that is it you cannot uh um use any dollars towards it all right all right so real quick basic information whenever and again this is pre-covid 19 96 percent of the people in the in in the country spend first then save four percent of the people in the country they save first then spend that's why there has been a very minuscule percentage of americans that's been able to see this situation as an opportunity to acquire more assets to develop a business um I, the one thing that we've shared even as a company multiple times that you know chaotic chaotic times are an incubator for creativity and so for for my you know my 1099 contractors my, my my people that are that operate in the gig economy this is a time in which we can spur some creativity but we do also want to ensure that we can set aside money that allows us to be aggressive, proactive in a time frame in which our competition may not be, right? And so saving is a very important aspect and trigger and responsibility of operating if it's a household or even a business, um, because there's just times and events that may trigger um, the need for money that you may not want to pull your earned income out of immediately that you could just pull from your savings for. So a few quick things here, as you can see, um, you know, you can have a plan, but if really if there's no action to it, you're dreaming. Uh, if you have a, a lot of action, you can do a lot of moving around, but if you don't have a plan, you're really walking around confused. But the biggest thing, as long as you have a plan, you tie that with the proper action, that is the equation for success. Um, last thing I'll point out with this slide is that there is a number of percentages that go out on, hey, how much should I save? on a month to month basis on a, or on an annual basis, 10%, 20%, we like to say between 20 to 30%. The, the, the most important aspect of saving as of now, specifically in COVID-19, and, and if there's any note that you could take, please let this be it. Action is greater than the amount. I would rather you take the action of saving and not be too caught up on the amount, even if it's 15 bucks, just flex the muscle, right? Even if it's $20, because this is a time in which we have to apply our resources towards a priority. Savings is a priority, but you don't want to disrupt any positive momentum on setting money aside because you know you save a good amount of money and then you can't revisit that um, the next week or the next month, all right. All right, now keep me posted if you if we got any questions along the way. I'm gonna keep peeking in the chat. Appreciate putting that poll up, Carmen. All right, real quick, I, and again, we we have a melting pot of individuals that is on this uh, uh, joining this call. We have a, a number of individuals that will be able to see the recording. We may have entrepreneurs that may still be in school. We have entrepreneurs that that may be in the process of getting their masters right now that have been working. Um, that a portion of their, um, we'll just say, budget that they've been operating off of may be off of their uh, student loans. And so you want to be very clear on what you want to allocate that's off of your student loans. And in this next slide, I'll share. Because if you, let's say you go to Chipotle and you purchase, um, you know, a meal for seven thirty-seven, dollars if you're using financial aid to purchase that meal, take into consideration your repayment plan is going to dictate the true cost of that meal, right? So if you have a 10-year repayment plan and you spend $737 on your Chipotle order today, over that 10-year period, that Chipotle meal really was more like $20.04. And so you want to be very clear on what you're going to, what you are allocating your dollars towards, especially if it's around the necessities of today. And if a portion of the dollars that you have access to is through um, financial aid, uh, because you, you may have gone back to school if you're currently in school. Um, just be very, very clear on that. All right, debt elimination. 
So we have a unique space in which we're in currently because federal student loans, you should have already received a notice about um, the deferment in which you can embark upon, I believe it's until September of 2020. Um, if you have any other debts, if it's credit cards, um, liabilities in the form of a mortgage, please reach out to all of those providers. If your income has been impacted through this pandemic, through COVID-19, it is extremely important that you reach out to those providers and let them know how you've been impacted. There's been credit card um, providers, financial institutions in which they uh, frozen interest in which they've been able to defer payments for a certain amount of time, regardless of what you are able to um, receive from those providers, if it's around um, a credit card, if it's around your mortgage, um, if it's around student loans, make sure you get it in writing. Whatever they say, hey, you can defer payments until October, we'll freeze interest. Make sure you request they send you whatever those terms are in writing via email so you can at least have a paper trail because one of the things in which I've been getting a number of questions on, all right, Isaac, should I try to save money in the midst of this pandemic or should I try to eliminate some debt since I don't have to, since they're freezing interest and I can probably put this payment towards uh, the principal uh, that I currently have, which is a great question. The immediate question is, do you have the amount of savings that you should have? And if that, and if that question is, if the answer to that question is no, First, we need to identify what the amount needs to be. And then two, we may be able to leverage and capitalize off of these 90 days or 120 days or whatever time period where you have some modified payments and you can apply that towards your savings so you can beepen that up. Keep in mind, if any payment that is deferred, deferment does not mean elimination. Just because they say you can pay later does not mean you, you don't have to pay at all. So, so even if it's your utility bills, even if it's, you know, power bill, water bill, whatever bills that you may have or expenses or liabilities in which you're able to develop some flexibility around, make sure you don't miscategorize that grace with elimination versus deferment. All right, so we're at 329. All right, real quick, I'm going to speed through this due to this, just due to time. There's certain life, life events, as you can see, be prepared for what's unseen. We're going through it right now. There's some folks on the call that may be in the process of buying a house that was probably in the process of purchasing a car. Um, you may have some baby Isaacs on the way. Regardless of the situation, there's certain life events that we won't be able to um, necessarily prepare for because it's, it's out the blue but we still gotta be able to know how to navigate life as we run our business, right? And so the different phases of businesses, we're very aware of. We may have a good amount of folks that are in a startup phase. Um, the one point, one thing I'm going to point out is inconsistent revenue. We all know about that um, if you are a true startup. <laughs> um, but that is that may be a phase in which you're in. And we're gonna quickly walk through these phases just due to the, the amount of time that we have left. Um, then we have the growth phase, right? And so that's when you get a bit more uh, of an understanding of the expenses that it takes to run the business, you may get to a point to where you can start bringing on more people to help from a staffing standpoint. So it's a very, very fun stage. Um, maturity, um, that's when things start to stabilize. You have a good market presence um, and you can really start forecasting. You can say, well, I know over the next six months, we're going to make X amount of money. That's when you can really start forecasting. Um, and then at some point, you're going to transition that business, right? There's that succession plan. And so, again, with our, our those that are operating in the space of out of running a business, running a, a practice, or, or even just doing some contracting work on the side, um, there is this, we'll just say, phases of a business, of an entity that you at least want to be aware of. All right, I'm peeking at any questions, y'all. Throw the questions out. There, um, any question is a great question. So the um, if, if you have some type of tool that can display your financial situation all in one location, right? It may not be this of a spreadsheet, but you got to have something in which you can, you know, click one button, double click something in which you can see from an asset to a liabilities to what it takes to live on a month to month basis. Again, the time is now because this is 
the time in which we are still and typically when you're still you're swiping on that on your phone or on your tablet and next thing you know you don't purchase a few things on amazon and so we need to be very clear on what it takes to live on a month-to-month -month basis this is the best time to get a real understanding on on your financial position from interest rates that that you've been looking for for a credit card that you haven't been able to track down or um, any accounts then what you need to track down just passwords this is the best time to get your financial um, position in in a, in a really good posture and so a spreadsheet like this um, could be helpful uh, for you in your household all right credit so stimulus so we got the stimulus coming through if you make of course, less than seventy-five thousand dollars, you will qualify for the full one thousand two hundred uh, for an individual. And uh, of course, if you're a two-income household, that'll be twenty-four hundred for you and your uh, spouse. Um, and again, five hundred dollars for any dependents that you may have. And so, this could be a great opportunity for you to be proactive on your credit. This could be a great opportunity for you to look into possibly getting a secured credit card to have an impact on your credit. Regardless, you need to be aware of one, where you go, where you need to go to be able to check your credit. Of course, annualcreditreport.com, there's a number of different platforms. Uh, another platform that there's a few things that may be in collections that you want to address with this stimulus. Um, there's an app that we use is free uh, credit wise, which is actually through Capital One. Um, it's been a really good app, not necessarily on credit score, but more specifically on items that are reported on your credit and anything as well, um, anything that's in collection, as well the contact information, um, those items that are in collections. That's usually the biggest hang up is that, hey, I, I'm, I don't know where I can get a hold of. So that app has been very helpful, especially with it being free. Then you just want to know the basic information on what it what it takes to be able to have good, fair, or even excellent credit, right? And so the the ideal game plan is to get more over here on the good and excellent side. But even if you're at a 400 credit score, I'm, we're, we're working with a client now, their credit score is in, you know, I want to say mid 450s. And um, we have a game plan to where they should, they should have a, a pretty significant increase, at least 100 points plus, you know, within the next three to six months. And so um, it's, it's, it's really like eating an elephant one bite at a time. Credit score, what we like to say is the adult version of your GPA, right? This is the adult GPA. And when we look at a credit score, it takes one bad grade and drop that, drop it down. And it takes a whole heap of A's to bring it back up. So even in the midst of you operating, you know, a business or, um, um, or your practice, credit is a great way in which you can develop access to institutions' money without having to use your own cash. All right, 335. All right, real quickly, I'm going to roll through this. And again, any collection items that you have, make sure you get everything in writing. Um, never send any money unless it is in writing. Uh, let's see here. Offensive planning, this could be a good time to potentially you know, look at getting into the market. And so I'm going to leave it here on this picture really quickly. Um, the market really is just a reflection of companies, right? And so we hear about, hey, should I invest in stocks? Should I invest in stocks? What thing that we've been challenging um, really everyone with to say, okay, when you look at a stock, I want you to see it as a share of a company. So don't just think about the, the stock. Think about the functionality of the company. What, is, what does it take for that company to make money and do you understand it, right? Buy what you consume. If you like J's, it may make sense to get Nike stock. So when you think about the stock market and you see these different boats, these different boats are essentially companies that are all on the same body of water. This body of water right now is, you know, we'll just say it's very, very wavy. There's a lot of activity on the water and we can call it due to the pandemic. And so even though everyone has different boats, different sizes, different captains, different weights of the boats, they're still being impacted by this pandemic because they're all in that same body of water. You want to have a clear understanding of the captain of the boat, the weight of the boat, right? The CEO of the company, the cost of the, it, what it takes to run the company. So before you invest in the company, you know how that boat 
that captain can react to any potential waves that may come. Hopefully that made sense. I know I sped through that analogy. Uh, options. All right, so this is what I'm gonna do. Now we are back. I am going to um, wait in the questions box, in the chat box, on any questions that you may have. I wanna be very specific with the remainder of time that we have. Um, with this going from, you know, from three until 345, we have about eight minutes. And so any questions that you have, please ask away. I'll be more than happy to answer those to the best of my ability. And it could be questions around the stimulus for households. It could be questions around, um, you know, Isaac, what's some of the best practices that you've seen around money management for businesses? Um, what have you seen the best way to probably replace any deficits in cash flow? Whatever it may be. Mm, that's a really good question. Uh, so the question I see is, how would you recommend setting a budget for newlyweds? That is a great question. Um, so with newlyweds, especially around budgeting, usually that there's been some type of um, activity and, and habits that was created before you came together and got married, right? And so individually, there was a way in which you've been operating your budget that made sense for you prior to you getting married. Now, with you being married, the first question is, has there been a conversation about budgeting? If there has been a conversation about budgeting, then we need to look into, okay, how do we want to create accounts that are aligned with the way in which we spend money? So with the newlywed, we may have a joint account in which all of the expenses for that for the household or for you know, we, what we like to call hard, fast bills, anything in which you turn it off or take it away, right? So it could be a car note, it could be your water bill, it could be your power bill. What are the bills, cell phone bill? What are the bills that it takes to be able to operate? And now let's make sure that everything comes out of one account so we can ensure that whatever it takes on a month-to-month -month basis, $5,000 a month, $3,000 a month, $10,000 a month, we can take our income and shift it over into that joint account to ensure we can take care of those expenses. And so the main thing is getting a clear picture on what it takes to operate on a month to month basis together. Then once you see the income sources, we can then say, now that we've taken care of our expenses, how much money could we potentially set aside to save for the future, right? And so the budgeting aspect with newlyweds, the the really the, I don't want to say it's uncomfortable, it could be uncomfortable if you haven't had the conversation is, all right, if there are two accounts your wife has and two accounts that you have, and then you have one joint account, can you pull 60 days? Can you pull the last two month statements of all accounts, sit at the table together and say, all right, which expenses need to be in a joint account? Which expenses need to be in a personal account? And then what is the ideal amount of each area, right? So, you know, we even recommend for husband and wives, you know, or individuals, make sure you have walking around money. We like to call that the WAM account, right? W-A-M. So if you like to have some money in your pocket throughout the week or throughout the month, make sure you account for that. But I think the biggest thing is identifying that hard, fast bill expense. Um, any other expenses that are tied to the individual or the lifestyle that you've created, and then make sure that your income can pay for that and as well set money aside for the future. So that was a really good question, uh, Michael, great question. Any other questions? Mint.com is actually another, I know the Mint, they have a Mint app but I'm, that has a, uh, it's a good tool in which you can sync your accounts. Um, 
um, and look at the transactions and categorize them as well. Um, <laughs> Carmen is exactly right. Yes, yeah, show compassion. Um, usually, usually within um, um, you know married couples, there's always you know some type of uh, we'll just say natural characteristic around money. Someone is usually a saver. Someone may be a spender. And there's nothing wrong. If, you know, let's say the husband likes to, to, to spend money and a wife likes to save. There, there's actually nothing wrong with how they've been, you know, how they like to, to handle money. We just have to create an environment where they can still activate, flex that muscle that doesn't disrupt the ultimate goals of the household. So we've even seen situations in which we've taken the lesser income and, and saved it. Right. And so could be a teacher, could be, you know, someone doing part time work, spouse doing part time work. We just save that full amount and then operate the household off of the other spouse's income. And so there is definitely a, 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 an emotional process of having that discussion around money. And so make sure that you can give some grace on habits that not only you didn't create, but you aren't part of the environment that informed their the decisions around money, because typically when it comes to budgeting, financial literacy, that is more so a reflection of the type of environment you either grew up in or the environment that has cultivated your perspective, um, you know, till today. <laughs> That's right, Carmen. Don't get don't get divorced over money. All right. Can I speak to the different credit rating systems like the Vantage? score or the system used by a mortgage company versus other lenders. So this that's that's been a revolving door. The, the, the credit uh, credit rating systems and, and industries I've I've really been very frustrated with, um, especially as of recent, because you know if it's Aquifax to whoever, uh, whenever they run your credit, it, it, there's typically a you know a different um, equation. Um, more than anything, to, to, to get ahead of any type of, uh, we'll just say, red dots that, that could show up on your credit report, those areas in which we shared on the, on the screen, um, what it takes to be able to manage your credit, the biggest thing is looking at utilization ratio. So any credit cards you may have, any liabilities that you may have, let's make sure that you're current on those payments. You can keep it under that 30% utilization ratio on what your balance is. So if you have a credit card with a thousand dollar limit, and again, the first thing you want to know is when that credit card reports to the credit bureaus. And so once you're clear on that, you want to report that card reports or those series of cards report that that balance is under the 30% utilization ratio. And so um, with the different mortgage companies, I think part of the process of um, as you know, it's a bit more comprehensive. Not only they look at your credit, but also they're looking at, you know, the, the status of your account, you know, how, what has been the financial situation of these accounts that we're going to pull in regards of cash in the account, balances of the account at the end of each month. So income is definitely going to have a, a play in that as well, your potential expenses. And so you want to make sure that you're a good steward of, of your dollars, because whenever you do start the process, of um, potentially getting financing from the house uh, for the house or for the property, they're going to pull your financial as well. If you need to make a down payment, you want to make sure you have enough money set aside to be able to take care of that. And so great question around the different credit rating systems. Um, knowing that that process is pretty comprehensive, um, I would just control what you can control at this point, which is the, the items that report to the credit um, rating systems and, and as well what it takes to make sure that you have those green dots that can report as well. So great, definitely great question again, Michael. Any other questions? I love questions. Keep them coming. Did I see something there that said, Isaac, what is your cash app? We want to send me five. No, I didn't see that. I'm sorry. Made that up. My bad. Anything else? 
Appreciate it, Michael. Appreciate it. We didn't get to hit all the information. Let me do this real quick. I'm going to share this. This may be helpful in regards of just the separation of one's dollars. Um, and so if you can see the screen there, if you want to take a quick screenshot, make sure that as you separate your money, you have three kinds of money, short range, mid range, long range. And so that will allow you to um, pretty much use your money like a like a football game, or like a basketball game. You know, you got you got your strategy to get two points and you got your strategy to get three points. And so um, I know that being here in Birmingham, Alabama, we got Auburn and Alabama fans that may be listening and watching. And so where you can get a first down with your money. Right. And so you can run the ball and get a first down, but you can also throw the ball, you know, for a deep pass and get a first down. And so you can see that long range vehicles there. And so um, I did quickly wanted to share that. But uh, this has been great. Um, Carmen, thank you for the uh, join such a, a, a great group of informative and smart people. Um, if there are any further questions, I believe my contact information, of course, is within the the whole uh, this whole ecosystem that we have that we're doing. and so again thank you for the opportunity and if there are no longer no more questions um, I hope you guys have a great rest of the day.